Well, I certainly think the word conceptual is absolutely essential. The idea of the notion of concept to understanding contemporary work. Uh, but uh, n very, very few photographers at the moment are going to embrace the label conceptual, you know, as if it were a, a movement, because um, it's just something that they take for granted in the same way that the pictures are going to have subject matter. I don't know any conceptual artists, so-called, uh, who actually used that term. Um, Solowit wrote sentences on conceptual art. I think, I think he's the only artist I can think of who actually uh, willfully used that term. It was more a term that was applied to certain artists by other people, like curators and critics. Conceptual photography or conceptual art are dead categories. I mean, they, they become remaindered. Um, 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 so the idea that, that there is a that there remains an intellectual continuity between the kind of thinking that was going on in the late sixties and early seventies with what what is going on now is is a misnomer. <laughs> artists were really working in all sorts of different ways simultaneously and critics were struggling to figure out what to call it and actually there's that wonderful Lucy Lepard book Six Years that has a subtitle and the subtitle is the entire cover of the book <laughs> um, and it's a list of different names and categories for all these activities that were going on in the 60s that she as a critic didn't know what to call or, or how to understand them. So conceptual art, initially people thought maybe they'd call it um, idea art, or um, there was a whole issue of art in America um, playing with different names for it. Um, so conceptual art seems to be the one that's kind of stuck. You know, a lot of, a lot of the artists from the 60s who, who were people who were teaching me for example, at St. Martin's, and people whose work I was certainly very interested in, or, 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 or their immediate predecessors, probably more so, were working in a way which was not easily spoken about. You, you know, you got people talking about uh, sculpture and saying, it works, it doesn't work. Well, what, what does that mean? You know, it's kind of... It's, it's actually quite meaningless. And so the, the, nothing really is being communicated here. Nothing is really being taught apart from by some kind of suggestion. And that's not to say people who said that weren't right. I mean, you know, one might have agreed with them. But you still would like to know why. So I, I think part of what was happening there was a need for greater clarity and greater rationale in not only in making work, but but in speaking about it, there was no critical industry, in short, around art in the way that there there is now. That's why um, conceptual art took the form that it did in the late sixties and early seventies. Um, uh, uh, artists were faced with um, a, a modernism, an American modernism, um, that was. Um, mostly indifferent to the relationship between art and thinking and, and art and theory. So, that, so this generation of artists had to do the thinking for themselves. They had to write. They had to um, re-establish a kind of critical working relationship between what they did and the past. Because nobody else was doing it. You're, you're dependent on some form of documentation, documentation for the work to be seen and to be preserved. And, you know, it's pretty obvious to me that with my own work and with other people's work, far more people saw the documents than saw the work itself. So the, the, there was a certain uh, encouragement by going down that route to, to develop what had been the documentation into something in its own right. Photographs um, were initially talked about as if they were equivalent to a diagram, a graph, a, a telex, um, a piece of a map. 
a piece of information that um, that would not have been wrought or crafted or pre-visualized in the way that a traditional work of art would have been. So the conceptual artists who turned to photography um, claimed not to be at all interested in fine art photographic traditions. If you look at Richard Long's early photographs, they're quite uh, rudimentary in terms of uh, focus and uh, image clarity and so on but they do the job and um, you know I couldn't possibly speak for him but I would imagine as far as he's concerned they did do the job and they didn't have to be outstanding examples of photography. That fits in more broadly with as I've said the functional uses of photography during this period and we see this we see this again in a number of photographers such as John Hilliard who, who is more interested in the, um, the technical capabilities, the technical apparatus of taking a photograph, of photography itself. With some of the works I made in, in this period, around about 1970, 71, um, I was deliberately looking at things like time, exposure, speed, and trying somehow to incorporate the means of production into the image itself. So, so the, the subject uh, was also, if you like, the object of the picture. So um, with a work like 60 Seconds of Light, for example, if that work is about time and light, something absolutely fundamental to analog photography, then logically the subject would be a clock and in this case a standard darkroom clock with uh, the, the image being progressively uh, washed out with light. So, so in a way there's something behind that which is saying if you're going to take a particular picture um, how do you decide what kind of exposure to give it because depending on that decision you get a very different kind of result and a very different appearance and possibly a very different significance. So I was kind of I was kind of taking that question and reducing it right down to this simple image of a clock which which actually then told you in the in the finished set of prints this picture uh, took five seconds to make and you can actually see it because the second hand moving through a five second increment is reflecting light and because the background of the clock behind it is black you can actually see the trace of it on the negative. I mean I, I know what it probably means for me and, um, and probably you could say it relates to the kind of work I do which, which is very um, you know, it's very prepared. I, I mean, I often start sitting at a table like this, probably this very table, drafting out ideas. So it's a very prescriptive um, activity, and 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 it's strange in a way, you might say, for most kind of photography, where I'm actually literally drawing a photograph before it is ever made. So so that you know, they are they are very conceptualized. Those, those images. I, I think the other thing to say about this is that you're then talking about something very nameable. You're talking about a set of ideas which, which you can speak about. And, and if the purpose is to embed those ideas in the finished photograph, then they also are intended to be retrievable. It's always a question of making this picture like this and then making it again like that and so on so you you know you could have a work like camera recording at some condition which has got 70 different attempts to make the same picture some of the recent work i've been doing you only have two attempts to make this picture and uh, all the works i've been doing in the last few years you could say are loosely about point of view <laughs> It says harmless to cats, weatherproof, low maintenance, and highly effective. And then this is my stupid uh, drawing uh, with uh, you know, like a dog, 
a woman. You know, that's that's what I was using to work from. And then and then you know this is what this is what I ended up with. You know, so you you spot the difference. You can see it's uh, it's a cat used in the picture, not a dog. There are actually two images, one on top of the other, so that the cat is actually there twice on top of itself. They don't quite perfectly line up. They line, they line up reasonably well. I can see there are two tails here, for example, and, and two whiskers, and the the eyes are a little bit out of alignment. So So looking at the cat from one side, let's say its heads to the left as we see it. Here there's a woman behind it reclining, reading the book. And then I went round the other side, photographed the cat again, and there's a real cat, a predator, stalking in the garden. And in this original picture, the cat would actually have been seen the other way round. So this cat would have been over here. So, you know, it's travelled some distance from the original drawing, but loosely it conforms to that scheme. If I was looking at this uh, in a completely innocent, naive kind of way, probably the thing that would really get my attention first is this cat, because it's the central picture component. And, um, you know, then, I, then I'd be looking at it, and uh, I'd be wondering why actually it was it was there twice it's it's doubled why on earth is that and then if i look around the cat and i see this cat and strangely it's almost like a ghost image because it's superimposed on top of this woman and if if i go back then to the cat and try to understand why there are two cats you know it's it's not that difficult to um, to decide that actually it's been photographed from each side, uh, which, which would explain all this. And then uh, if I think about it, I know that looking at a cat from one side, the tail's on the right. And if I go around the other side, it's gonna be on my left. So then I can understand it's been flipped. You know, it's not, I'm not saying this is uh, blatantly and immediately obvious, but, but I, think it's, I think it's doable. I, I think you, I think you can get to that point, and th and then and then it goes back to my starting point about uh, what difference does it make whether that cat is photographed from this side or that side. The the kind of basic question, of course, is as simple as why make this picture from this place, not that place, if you're going to end up with something which, for the most part, is the same. And the reason will be that it will be contextualised by what's around and behind it. And then that different context is capable of giving it quite a different reading.